What's going on guys, it's you here bringing you a, another review on Fairy Tale 100 Year Quest. And this episode, I gotta say, was honestly fun. I enjoyed it. Um, and sweet, honestly. I really enjoyed seeing this one animated. Um, they did a great job. It was funny. It was good. It was a little bit of everything. So guys, let's get to it. So we start this episode with seeing the fight between... Wendy or Cocoon Wendy and Mr. Spit here uh, honestly a fight that I couldn't really care for much like I just don't but it was fun to see that Wendy is now getting serious about this fight I will say she definitely needs this W uh, but uh, we see that the fight is now gone outside and Wendy is ready to take him down and he has dest destroyed one orb as he goes and finds the other ones we see the Groovia squad along with Lucy trying to take on Kana. Kana was funny. I absolutely loved it because she was probably at some point under the influence of the White Mage, but she was more drunk than anything else that it wore off. And she was just basically just being Kana, just being herself. I love that Wendy, I mean, excuse me, not Wendy, excuse me, uh, Lucy tried to take. Uh, Kana's method of you know people putting people in cards, but it backfired on her, which was fun. And Kana basically, <laughs> basically being herself and just joining in on the fun, helping out there. So good that Kana actually joins in. I actually like that she helped out. But we also have probably some people's favorite moments of this episode with seeing uh, Urza and Jalal. Uh, we see that Jalal is ready to white out Urza, and that could be taken in almost any con uh, you know, uh, context. But um, Urza's like, "Look, I don't want to, uh, you know, be in this position where my arm, my hands are binded. It brings out a memory that I don't like." Now, I don't know if she was being, you know, facetious here, which for those that don't know, you know, if she was lying or if she was, you know, whatever. But we see that she actually gets out and basically starts to strip. But this works out in Jalal's favor. I mean, in Urza's favor because we see that she actually binds him and says that now she wants to tease him. And so she actually is able to use that argument to kind of get him to not move, which is, I think, kind of funny. She leaves and she's ready to go back into the fight. And we go back to the fight between... Wraith slash Makarov up against Natsu and that fight was very at first one-sided because we see Makarov's energy along with Wraith's kind of combined with each other's and Wraith actually started thinking you know we have a very strong compatibility you know why is that you know is he a family member of mine or what is it like why are we so compatible and I actually like seeing the backstory. We see Portly Yusuka. We see a lot of old, mem I guess, old members of Fairy Tale. Excuse me, that actually went on to become their own guild masters, which is kind of crazy. Just now that I'm actually seeing it in animated form, we see Bob, the the headmaster of Mermaid Heel, the headmaster of Quattro Puppy. Obviously, we see you know uh, Hades. Uh, he, former master of the Arasian, and excuse me, not Arasian, but I forgot what the other guild was, but just other members that went on to build, make their own guild, and just kind of cool, you know, just seeing that flashback, and we see that the memory of Wraith dying here, we actually see that it's revealed that he was actually a family of, not, well, yeah, family member of the fairy tale guild, we see that they were very close, he actually stops the fight and he realizes that he was a member and he's able to pass, which I think was really sweet. I thought that was nice. And Makarov just gives a kind of send off to Wraith, which was kind of sweet. We go then we go to see the fight between Loxus and Kyria. And boy, oh boy, was that another fun one for some. Uh, we see that Loxus is all about equal opportunity. He did not hold back his punches. And he basically takes out Kiria with no real effort. And we see that she's like a man who has his strength. And like, And not only that, but like, like he's weak in the heart or whatever. Like, I think I'm in love. And we see that her eyes she just brightens up, which was kind of funny. But we have Urza showing up uh, as Loxus was about to destroy the orb. And we see that we're going to be getting a fight that maybe a lot of us 
Would have loved to have seen early on, but we're getting here now. Loxus and Urza. A matchup for this century. You know, just these two going at it would, is great. So I'm looking forward to how that's going to be as they're both getting ready. And then we have Natsu, who he's actually wanting to join the fight now that he's done with Wraith. And he's able to see if about maybe finding the big baddie. As he would say, you know, the bad guy is in the middle. Normally, that's where they're at. And so he heads in that direction. He sees the light from the orb. As he gets there, though, we actually see him getting and it's finding that the white mage is knocked out. She is unconscious, lying on the ground, not too so happy as they're, you know, walking in there. We actually see them discuss the possibility of beating her up while she's unconscious, which is something that, you know, really should you even be considering and so as they're talking we see that Nats is ready about to just knock her out but we see her waking up and she looks at him calls out to him and then gives him a hug and he is just in shock as to what her real reason for doing that is so now we see her that she's hugging on him and you know the episode ends so I wonder what Nas is going to do with all this confusion, but let me know what you guys think. I'd love to hear your thoughts. As always, though, guys, stay safe to cure yourselves and others, and I'll catch you all later.